Hey everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services. Today we're going to talk about appending scores. And what does it mean to append a score? It simply means to merge all the files uh, into one file. And you may think, well, why would I want to do that? Well, a few reasons. One, say you're working with uh, many songs, several songs, or you're working with several movements of a symphony. And as you've been writing these uh, pieces of music, you've been just saving each movement or each song as its own separate file because it's been easier to deal with, easier to work with. But the time comes now you need to really put everything together and you start realizing that you need to deal with page numbers and all sorts of things. So, um, you know, you're thinking about putting all the files together. Well, the obvious first benefit is that you have one file uh, to deal with instead of several. Uh, and uh, that makes things handy if you want to send the file to other people, if you want to uh, print it, uh, anything that would just create, uh, you know, you'd have to do multiple times. If you had multiple files, you just have one file to deal with. So that's obvious and, and uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next reason is say you have, um, you know, the publisher or, you know, you decide you need to change the font size for a particular item. Say, you know, you want all your expressions to be 13 point instead of 14 point font or whatever. Uh, well, if you had to make that change, you'd have to, you know, have to make that change in all um, all your documents, or at the very least, you'd have to export a house style and then import that into all the documents. Either way, it requires dealing with multiple files, and that gets really uh, tedious, especially when you're at the end of your work and you want to just get it done. So, uh, having one complete file means if you change the expression text style, for instance, in one, you know, in, in your master file, that's it, you're done. Uh, it, it will uh, make the change in all of the movements, all of the songs in your, in your compilation. So that's another reason you, you would want to uh, uh, merge the files together. Uh, another reason is, uh, I, I just mentioned it, page numbers. So say you have a, you know, a song that's three pages long, and then, you know, second song is, would start on page four, and say that's two pages long, and the next song would start on page six and, and and so on well you know say in that first song you decide you need to add a 16 bar uh, tag at the end of it and that bumps uh, the song onto another page so you have four pages now you have to go into the uh, next file and change that page number from four to five you have to change the next one from uh, what did I say from six to seven and if you have, you have 20 songs you'd have to ch make the change in 20 files just to accommodate a uh, uh, a change in one song. Well, again, in one file, these page numbers are automatic, they just are continuous and you don't have to think about it. So uh, if you want to add music to one particular song, everything else will change automatically. So that's really great. And finally, uh, dynamic parts. Say you're using parts, uh, the dynamic parts feature, and you have a symphony of, uh, you have 30 parts, all your you know woodwinds, uh, brass, percussion, strings, and you have to format 30 parts in your symphony in the first movement and then you'd have to go into the next file the second movement and format all those same 30 parts again and then you'd have to you know you know go into the third movement say you had four movements you'd have 120 parts to deal with and that would be really a drag that would that would, that would not be so fun so again one file means one set of parts 30 parts no matter how long it is and uh, that's a real time saver. So um, go ahead and, and really think about this if you're dealing with multiple files. And, and now I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, I have a pretty simple example here. This is called, uh, this is two songs called Without You and Say Goodbye. And um, I'm going to, I want, what I want to do is bring Say Goodbye into Without You. Without You is going to be my first song. And that's important. The, um, the, this, the file that you're appending the music into is going to have the uh, the master style, so to speak. It's going to have all the house uh, all the house styles will will take on the uh, the style of this first song. So we'll call this the master file. So go ahead, say um, click on the master file uh, and say file append score. And I'm going to select this uh, say goodbye. And I should add that you know I think I mentioned without you has alto and tenor. Uh, say goodbye just has tenor. Uh, in it. So watch what happens. Sibelius warns me the score cannot be appended. There's one staff in, in one score, whereas the current score has two staves. So what you need to do, if that's the case, if you're dealing with different sets of instruments, 
you need to make sure you have what uh, essentially is the largest common denominator and make sure all the scores have the same number of instruments. So what you need to do is go to this file, for instance, I'm going to say create instruments, shortcut is I, add to score. Remember I said alto here and without you one? Well, let's just try adding a soprano to say goodbye and see what happens. Okay, so I add it, say append score. And, uh, oh, the other thing I need to do in say goodbye, I should really save it as a new file. Okay. So say goodbye to, now go without you, append score, say goodbye to. Now I get a different dialog. Sibelius will proceed, but it's warning me that the alto in one score is known as the soprano in the other, and it's thinking maybe I don't want to do this. And maybe you don't want to do that if your instruments are truly different and you, you mess something up in the order. But in this case, I'm going to let it go ahead. And I just wanted to point this out to you to, to show you that Sibelius... If, all the, if the number of instruments is the, is the same, Sibelius will go ahead and do it, but if the instruments are different, you'll get this warning. So that's okay. I'm going to say yes. And now what happens, look at the end of my score here, or here's the end of this song, page 5. Now I've got this little these instrument changes, soprano, tenor, and I've got my new song. Well, it kind of looks like my new song anyway. It does say without you up there, and I'll address that in a minute. But what I'd like to do is go ahead and um, hide all of these staves. I mean, if I have only one person singing, no need to show two. And I select all of them, and the, the way you hide them is simply go to Layout, Hide Empty Staves. Sibelius has helpfully retained all the formatting from my other document, you know, the page breaks. I mean, the, the uh, yeah, the page breaks, system breaks. And uh, just bring that down, and this looks pretty good. Why does it say without you, though? Well, because I'm using a wildcard here, and I'm using um, the title wildcard, which I have in, in the song. And so I'm going to go ahead and actually just hard, you know, hard code that in, essentially, uh, say goodbye. And now it's not going to use the, the title uh, wildcard. And, and uh, you can look up wildcards more but on your own, but that's kind of out of the scope of this uh, tutorial. But now I have the correct title, uh, say goodbye here. A uh, few other things. Uh, this looks really actually quite good now. I'm very happy with this. Uh, page numbers are consistent. Uh, if you look here, uh, I've got page 5 at the end of the song, then 6 and 7. But a few things. One, these instrument changes, I don't really need them. Um, say if you had a piccolo that then was flute 3 in the second movement, you'd want an instrument change. But here I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. Next thing, cautionary key signature. Don't really need it. Um, uh, you would need it if you were just going in a, in a regular piece, but if, if you're at the end of the movement or the end of the song, you don't really need to show a, a cautionary key signature to show what the next song is going to be. So I go ahead and select the bar line here. I hit K for key signature, just as if I'm creating a regular old key signature. Um, but instead of just saying OK, I'm going to say hide. And what that does, is it actually hides the cautionary key signature. So I go ahead and say OK. And there we go. I still have the key of B flat in my uh, second song, but um, you know the uh, key signature is hidden. Same thing with the time signature. Go ahead, uh, click the bar line, hit T for time. And ordinarily, I would want to leave cautionary on, but this in this case, I'm going to select it, uh, deselect it, say OK, and I've created a new time signature. But um, oh, the other thing I should probably do. Uh, let's just go ahead and undo that for a second, is I'm going to say, I'm not going to say rewrite the bars up to the next time signature, and that will prevent Sibelius from making any changes. So I go ahead and say OK. And now you see that uh, nothing has changed in this, in this new file other than the, key, the uh, cautionary time is gone. Finally, final bar line. Go ahead, click this, create, bar line, final, Great. I've got two songs together. Page numbers are good. Everything's good. You might want to just respace this. Shift Apple N. And you're done. That's a pending score in Sibelius. Hope you enjoyed it.